Hi everyone, it's Jen again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about meals on a budget. So when I think about budgeting for your meals, I think about getting the most for your money, of course. And when I think about that, I like to think that you wanna spend a good chunk of your grocery budget on things that are healthy. So base your meals mostly around vegetables. And as long as they're in season, you can always um, make meals fairly inexpensive. Today we're gonna to be roasting a chicken with vegetables and then we're going to take the remnants of making that meal to make a vegetable or a chicken vegetable stock. So we have, it's very simple, it's, we have a whole chicken, we have celery, mushrooms, onions, potatoes, carrots, and some kale. This is like the most versatile meal you can make. So this is the most basic thing and you can go from there. So once you master making a chicken from scratch, then you add in whatever spices you want. So you can use Google to look up great spice ones and um, change it up every week. I think our family eats this meal every single week and sometimes it's a little bit different, but it just comes back to this basic knowledge of how to cook a whole chicken. And I think you can find chicken fairly inexpensively at the uh, grocery store. So um, I also think um, a, a way to save some money is by thinking about what you're purchasing before you go to the grocery store. So having a plan really helps, but often that doesn't work out, at least for me. I sh when I'm at the grocery store, I just buy things that are on sale or, or whatever is interesting me at the time, but sometimes you find them in your fridge two weeks later. So what do you do when you've got things that are like, I had some wilty kale, so I'm gonna throw that in. Um, so go through your fridge when you're doing meals like these and see what scraps of things you might have thrown out you could actually use. So when we're making a stock today, I'm actually going to use these sprouted onions and you might throw these out, um, but don't throw them out. You can actually use these. They're still full of great onion flavor. We're gonna throw those into our stock. You could throw them into whatever you're sauteing to. And we'll cut into the onion and see if the inside's okay. Um, I've got a bowl over here of scraps that I'm saving. So my carrot peels, as long as there's no mold on the outside and they're still gonna be full of flavor, we're gonna keep these in a freezer bag and put them in the freezer for when you actually have time to make your stock. And you can always have a bag going and I always have something to toss in there. So even if you have a bunch of fresh parsley, you can save the ends. They're still full of flavor. You know, you use the tops, but um, the stems are full of flavor and they'll go into your stock and you're not gonna eat them. It's just to add some extra flavor. So your stock might always be changing too based on what you have, but that's okay, be flexible. Um, so what I'm gonna do is get the vegetables ready and we're gonna, we're gonna toss them in the pan first. So I'm gonna heat up the pan medium, medium high heat, toss in some olive oil or your favorite fat, butter, uh, if you have a little bit of bacon fat around. And like I said, I'm gonna save my carrot peels. These are going into my freezer bag or into the stock later on. Clean everything first, of course. And my carrots are looking pretty good on the outside, but sometimes they're a little bit you know, like dirty or like starting to get a bit of mold, don't use that peel, but the inside is still really great to use. When I'm chopping up my vegetables for roasting with the chicken, it's a really rough chop and you kind of want your, if you're using carrots and potatoes, you want them to be roughly the same size because they kind of cook at the same at the same rate. So I've got these nice mini red potatoes um, and they're gonna be just about the same size as the carrot. So uh, you can do this a number of ways. I'm using a cast iron skillet. If you have one, that's great. Or if you have a heavy pan that you can throw into the oven, that's really great. Or a Dutch oven, 
um, a Dutch oven that you could put on the stove or even like your baking pan. The baking sheet that we used last week for our nachos is just fine. So you're just going to maybe saute the vegetables first before you put them onto the pan, line it again with foil, and then we're gonna put our chicken on top of the vegetables. So our oil is heating up. I've got some little onions. I'm gonna just throw them in in chunks because they're just gonna cook and you can eat the whole thing. But this is also based on your family size, your family's preferences, what kinds of vegetables they'll eat or won't eat. You wanna try and sneak something in, maybe cut it up a little bit small, but um, this is really just to your taste. So uh, I like to make it really simple and then also throw in some really nutritious greens. I have these heating through. So the reason we're cooking the vegetables just a little bit to start is to give them a little bit of flavor by browning them a bit. Also getting them going, like get them cooking just a little bit because the way we're gonna cut the chicken up, you're gonna see is going to be much quicker than when you put a whole chicken into the oven. So you'll see. Okay, got my celery. Just give it a rough chop. I'm gonna save those bits. Sprinkle a little bit of salt and pepper on the vegetables. And then I'm just gonna throw the kale in on top. It's gonna wilt a bit. Oh, I forgot my mushrooms. I have some um, shiitake mushrooms today and I've taken off all of the stems. I did that yesterday and I'm just gonna throw these in whole but I save the stems as well because um, mushroom stems, if you don't use them, save them because they're really, they really do add a lot to your, your stock, whether you make a chicken stock or a vegetable stock or whatever. Okay. All right. So make sure your oven is preheated. I've got mine preheating to 400 degrees. Grab your chicken. So you could put your chicken right on top of your vegetables if you'd like. It's just gonna take longer to cook and some of the chicken that's underneath that's sitting on top of the vegetables like the skin's gonna stay kind of soggy so i like to have a crispy skin on my chicken i'm just putting this right on the cutting board and you're going to make sure you clean it really well afterwards of course so there are a couple of ways there are a couple of ways that you can do this there's a um, String tying our bird up, take that off, set it aside. You can throw this into your uh, refuse bowl as well. That could go into the stock. So there's a, there's a couple of ways you can, you can open up your chicken, which is what we're gonna do. So when it's laying flat, there's gonna be a little bit more um, surface area that's spread out uh, this way so that it, it cooks a little bit quicker and then the skin's all going to be face up. What you could do, you can find the backbone and you, would, you can cut down the sides of the spine like this and you're just gonna take the spine out and set that aside for your stock. Or what I find is even easier, and you keep, the, you keep everything together, is cut right down the middle of the chicken. So we're gonna do that. And don't be afraid, but I hope you have a fairly good knife. 
And you just break through that breast bone that runs right down the middle. There you go, you feel it pop. And then once you get it, you can even just use your fingers just to kind of separate it so you're not cutting shards of bone. Just if, if it takes a bit of time to get through. Okay, so now you've got this chicken that you can open up this way. So can you see this? So it's going to be in the pan, laying down flat. Now we're going to season it. And all I'm going to use is a bunch of kosher salt. So don't use table salt for this. I'm going to include some kosher salt in your package this week because you don't want to liberally salt with table salt. It'll be way too salty. But a coarse uh, kosher salt or a coarse uh, sea salt would be really good. So then we go on the outside of the skin here too. And then you can get underneath the skin and make a little, make a little uh, pocket between the skin and the flesh under here. And then you can grab some salt and you can spread it underneath. So you're seasoning the actual meat and you're going to season the skin. And the salt on the outside of the skin will help draw out the moisture and really crisp up the skin, which is what you want. And you can, so that was just like kind of in between the leg and the breast where you can sneak in under the skin there. And then you can find an opening at the back of the thigh or you make a little opening, just kind of poke through takes a little bit of experience, but you can usually find a little spot back here to poke in. This guy's tough. Okay. And then you can do the same thing there. Try not to poke a hole through the skin. If you do, that's okay. You can also, if you want to be just a little bit more decadent, you can slide in a couple pats of butter between the skin and the, the meat, the flesh as well. There, between the flesh and the skin, just you just need like a little opening. And then you just slide your finger along and kind of open up that space. Sorry. Salt. And then I'm gonna put this on top of our vegetables that are not cooked through, but they're just like heated up and caramelized a bit. Nestle this guy just on top of your vegetables. If you're doing it on a, on a baking sheet, then you'll wanna make sure the, the vegetables are spread out sort of evenly underneath the chicken. So I'm going to just rub some olive oil over the outside of the chicken and this also helps crisp up the skin. Make sure you get it into the nooks and crannies around the wings. Those will be tasty little treats for whoever gets the wing. Okay, now this is ready to go into the oven. Our oven's heated up 400 degrees and what we're going to do is put the pan so that the legs are facing the back of the oven where the back is the hottest. And, and then the legs take a little bit more time than the breast to cook. All right, so our chicken has been in the oven for 40 minutes now. 
Um, but depending on the size of your chicken, you'll want to check it. I would set a timer for 35 minutes, 40 minutes, and then have a look in the oven. Well, it's looking pretty good to me. I think the skin could use a little bit more browning, could get a little bit crispy, but we also want to make sure that everything's cooked through. I have a fork here just to check. I've got some potatoes and carrots that I can see down here. Just make sure they're cooked through. You just want to make sure it's, they say, fork tender, which means the fork should go in and then easily come out. Easily go in, easily go come out. I think they seem pretty good. I don't like my veggies too mushy, but you definitely want to cook through potatoes. Otherwise, they're not great. But the, the most important thing is to make sure that your chicken is cooked. So we have a thermometer. And ideally, the um, best way to check if your chicken is cooked is to make sure that the breasts are at perfect. See, our temperature reads 173. That's the center of that one breast. And then check the center of the thigh. And it should be, oh, that's very well cooked. It should be 185. The other way to test is to make sure it's golden on the outside and then the other way is to poke it and if the juices run clear and there's no blood that you can see in it then it's typically cooked well. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your chicken is fully thawed before you throw it into the oven so it cooks more evenly and also um, when you cook it from frozen it often gets like a rubbery texture but i'm going to throw this in even though it's cooked i'm going to throw it in under the broiler for just a couple minutes just to get it even crispier Okay, I think our chicken is done. That's looking pretty good, nice and golden. Crispy skin. So you wanna let your chicken rest for about 10 minutes. I'm going to pull it out, put it onto a cutting board and tent some foil over top. Let it rest for 10 minutes and then you can carve it up. You don't want to really wrap the foil over the chicken. You want it to sort of tense. So it's just to keep it hot and it's going to keep cooking as well, just a little bit. But you don't want to have too much moisture created in there because you'll, you'll uh, soggy up your crisp skin. So our veggies look really good. Um, the reason you wanna have some carrots and potatoes or something starchy in there like a sweet potato would be good too is just that there are some juices that come out of the chicken and you'll want to absorb the juices with those starchy vegetables. This looks really good. If you have any leftover juices at the bottom of the pan, make sure you save them and use them for cooking as well because it's sort of like a chicken stock in itself. Okay, I think we're ready to carve up our chicken. So you let it rest so that the juices sort of like get sealed back into the meat itself. So there are a couple of ways 
that you can chop up your chicken, but I like to divide it into the breasts and legs, and then you can further cut into the rest, and um, you're just cutting them off of the backbone. You just find a place where it feels easy to get your knife in there. And just kind of work it. And then right in between that breast and the leg. And then you can cut this breast right in half too, if you like. If you need to have a few more piece options. Whoever takes this piece gets the wing. Which is the best piece, I think, because you get a bit of everything, white meat and some brown meat. And then we can put this back on the veggies and serve this family style, which is how we do things around here. And the backbone is for Derek. Okay, we're back. We ate our deliciously satisfying roasted chicken dinner and we've saved all the bones. I saved all the scraps and I just added another carrot and a little bit more onion and celery. You can add some garlic if you have some. You can add, put in some fresh herbs or dried herbs. Um, so I have the, the backbone here. The bones that we saved from the dinner that were cooked and then in my freezer I had a couple of extra things so I have some parsley sem stems saved. I'm gonna throw in like half a bunch. I've got all of these shiitake mushroom stems that I had mentioned as well. They'll add some great earthy flavor but like I said this is totally your this is your chicken stock. You can throw in whatever you'd like. I also have, this is uh, ends of a uh, bulb of fennel, which I think might add some nice flavor. It's just a big frozen chunk. And then I found some extra chicken bones here. They're raw, so I'm gonna throw those in, but even just the, the cooked bones that you have and the vegetable scraps will make a really nice stock. So these are all going into the pot. If you have a pressure cooker or an Insta, Instapot, that would be a great way to um, use that. And so you just cover it in water. You just wanna Fill it up with water. I'm gonna add some whole peppercorns, so a handful. And I don't usually salt it. I just wait until the end to taste it because it does get a bit concentrated. Turn it on, put the lid on, and let it simmer away for an hour or two. If you're doing it in a pressure cooker, it only takes about an hour. You'll know by the smell and um, the depth of color. Then just strain it and you've got a few liters of stock at least. Okay, so that was uh, roasting a chicken with vegetables and then using the scraps and the bones to make a stock. We'll see you next week.